Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. This is your humble host, Coffee Stout, and we have a deck that is less than 20 rares that I think could be a contender for a deck that is usable, that is playable, that is fun at least to play, and can hold you in basically any game. It's very mid-rangey. It likes to recur itself over and over again. So let's take a look at what we have and what we are trying to do. Starting with turn one. Well, we're doing nothing for turn one. Then moving on to turn two, we are defending ourselves with things like Go for the Throat and Terra Sunder. We're also getting Shigeki Jukai, a visionary on the battlefield in order to pick it up, reach down and grab some land. Later on, we're going to be channeling this guy to return a bunch of stuff to our hand from the graveyard, which is great. I just absolutely love this card. Turn three, we're going to go Spelunking. We're going to go Spelunking, which lets us draw a card, and then we may play land from our hand, and if it is a cave, we gain four life. And lands, you control, enter the battlefield untapped. So these hidden nurseries, these hidden volcanoes, these hidden necropolises, all can come into the battlefield untapped, which is just phenomenal. We also have a four cavernous maws in here, so... Galisa's Sunslayer, probably just one of the best three drops, drops that have both the colors black and green in it. First Strike Death Touch, draws a card, loses a life, or you just can destroy an enchantment, or you can destroy a Planeswalker whenever it makes contact with the opponent. Just overall, wonderful stuff all together. Blood Rage Mycoid, well, we are going to be discovering with a lot of our lands like the hidden nurseries the hidden volcanoes and the hidden necropolises and we want to get prox off of that i like prox so we're going to be using the blood rage a mycoid in order to get a 1-1 black fungus creature token with this creature cannot be blocked if you descended this turn and descended is literally just you put a card in your graveyard since we're running a bunch of Caves. We have a Calamitous Cave-In, which deals X damage to each creature, and Planeswalker, where X is the number of caves that you control, and the number of caves in your graveyard. Meaning, this is hitting for 8 or 9 later in the game, and usually much earlier with Cosmium Confluence. Soul of the Wind Grace, after we discover, with our Hidden Nurseries, our Hidden Volcanoes, and our Hidden Acropolises, or we trade off the Cavernous Small, we could use Soul of Wind Grace to get those things back onto the battlefield quite rapidly. This is a big removal target, I have noticed in the few games I have played with this. So, yeah. Now, we generally are not discarding a land, gaining 3 life, discarding a land card, drawing a card. We could do that stuff later in the game. Uh, but for the most part, we're getting lands out of our graveyard, trying to find nice swings with Soul of Wind Grace so that we can put more lands out. But we could always discover it with like Hidden Volcano and Hidden Necropolis and Hidden Nursery. So you pop one of these bad boys and it is Discover 4. So we can discover Soul of Wind Grace, get Soul of Wind Grace back onto the battlefield. Then lo and behold, you put the Hidden Nursery back out onto the battlefield and you just got yourself a 5 4 for paying nothing, literally paying almost nothing except for five mana, right? But it is a little bit cheaper with two copies of the Sunken Citadel. You choose a color and then you add two mana of the chosen color, spin it only to activate abilities of land sources. That's the second thing you do with it. And the first one is you add one mana of the chosen color. The whole deck is kind of built around this card right here, the Cosmian Confluence, where you get to choose three, and you can choose the same mode more than once. You can search your library for a cave card. You can search your library for a cave card and search your library for a cave card. If we get this early on in the game, that's probably what we're going to do. We're going to search our library for a cave card three times, put three caves onto the battlefield, and then shuffle our deck. Contrarily, you could put three 1-1 counters on a cave that you control, and it becomes a 0-0 zero, zero creature with haste. It is still a land, or you could destroy an enchantment. So all together, just great card. Especially the ability to get multiple multiple different caves out onto the battlefield. It goes a long way of getting us to our in-game. And the Colossal Sky Turtle, which I love, 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 love. You discard Colossal Sky Turtle. You return target card from your graveyard to your hand. and Or you could discard Colossal Sky Turtle and return target creature to its owner's hand. So you could either dig through your graveyard and grab back like a Shigeki Jukai Visionary. 
or you can make the opponent pick up one of their creatures, or you could even pick up one of your creatures, namely Soul of Wind Grace, in order to continue, to continue, to continue. So how do we cast a blue in this? Well, we've got these forgotten monuments, which have other caves you control, have pay one life, add one mana of any color. So this Forgotten Monument allows us to play anything of any color we want. We could even think about ways to do other things with this particular card and things like Ren in current standard in order to have all the colors of the mana pool available so we could play the best of the best of the best cards. We could end up doing something like that, but this is not what this is. We are trying caves out in standard Magic the Gathering Arena. Thank you for joining today. Make sure you've liked the video and subscribed to the channel, and let's get right into the matches. It has been a long time since I played in Best of One, but here we are in the present Calamitous Cave In. Um, we only have green mana, Gleesa in hand, but this is a mulligan, and uh, this is rough. Why you doing this to me, deck? Why you doing it? Well, we're going to keep it. We have two copies of Galisa. If we just draw lands, particularly green, we should be okay. Play the tap land. Get it out of the way. Hit a Necropolis. Opponent has a Swamp and a Plains now. All right. He's going to be doing some strong stuff. We draw dead. Ward is paying three life. And when you gain life, this guy explores. Okay, we're going to let that go for now. We are going to let it go. Does not have lifelink or anything like that, so he needs more creatures to make that worth having on the field. Boys of the Blessed. Fine. And go to my turn. We still do not have land. Man, oh man, oh man. It'd be rough to lose the first round with this deck. <laughs> Just dying to no lands. That is something that you get with playing monocolor basic lands. Well, I mean, they're not basic, but, you know, common lands. Letting it go. Taking the four. He draws a card. Go to my turn. Hey, we got a second color on the field. And we could start pushing this stuff in, I think. Let's do that. Start to get some damage off. Really need green. Really badly. Swamp. And a scoop. And that's the problem with combo decks. That is the problem. I mean, we didn't lose, but whenever you're doing combo -y stuff, a lot of times if you do not draw your combo, you're just dead on spot. Best of one is a very strange place indeed. We could go Spelunking on turn three here. But we don't have green mana in hand. We have two of the three we need. Not a good hand. <laughs> Not a good hand, but I think that's going to happen a lot of the time. With this deck, we're really trying to get to the mid-range alive. That is our goal, to get to the mid-range alive. And Go for the Throat helps us get there. So we're going to keep it. Play the Hidden Volcano, pass the turn, Mountain comes down, Swift Spear comes down, and we are facing Mono Red. What does this Mono Red deck do? Never seen this one before. Anybody ever seen Mono Red? What, what's it do? Alright, opponent. I have noticed that Mono Red players spend an awful lot of time doing a lot of this. Sitting, waiting. So, why you even play Mono Red, my guy? You're supposed to be fast. Hey, Mountain. He's probably like watching TV or anything else. Eating noodles. Well, we're going to let it pass for now. Are you going to pump the crap out of him? Play with fire. Okay. We take two. Scrise to the top. Anything else? Yep. 
cool. Kill it. Hmm. Now we are in a weird position because we need green mana. <laughs> okay, we're, we're probably just dead. <laughs> Who mono faces Kakazan? Oh my word. Come on, make a move, my guy. And we finally found our mana. Fantastic. I think the best thing to do is a ghost spelunking here. This allows us to draw a card. It is a colossal sky turtle. Pretty good against uh, mono red here. Soul of Wind Grace can come down very soon. Trample Perois does not have haste though. Time to get Galisa involved. Haven't gotten roped yet, but my word is this guy a slow player. You're going to see a, a lot of cuts in this video. A lot of them because, wow, mono red players. There we go. Don't know why he did that. Have no clue. Doesn't matter. We pay, play Gleesa Sunslayer past the turn. Holds back the spear. Holds back the etchings of Kamano. Dies to removal. Definitely dies to lightning strike. Finds a mana, he finds a Urbrask's Forge. Does he swing? Does he mono red? He does. He mono reds. Okay. Well, we do this. That dies. We go down to eight. That was probably the proper move. That's fine. Do we have land in the bin? We do not. Of course we don't. Hmm. Really close to a confluence. Dropping this. I think we swing and try to draw. Or no. Destroy. That's an artifact. Tis a shame. Destroy that. Pass the turn. Mono red. If you make them run out of answers, they're dead. All right. We'll take three. Down to five. And after the longest wait possible, here we are. Wow. Um, I think we're swinging in. Yeah, we're going to swing. And we're going to remove three counters from Urbrass Forge. Oil, oil, submit. Yep. We are that kind of person. Drop another Blood Rage at my Quaid, and I think that we just beat Mono Red with a mid range deck. Which is generally what happens. We're so far ahead now. Urbrass Forge is useless with Gleesa Sunslayer on the field because you can just take those oil counters off. Another mana, and he's found a lot of mana. In the festivities, fine. There's a 1-1, one, one. fine. Swings with it, we block. 4, 8, 9, 10, 11. That's match, guys. All right, it was a little bit unorthodox, but we did beat, beat Mono Red. Mono Red dies to basic lands. Did you know that? Mono Red loses to basic lands. Two mana special yet again. Holy crap. Now we can go Spelunking if we get really lucky, but let's mulligan. Let's try to get more than two lands. Of course, we get two lands. Uh, okay. All right. I guess we're dropping off the Terra Sunder. We got four in the deck. We can make this green. Do we make it green or red? I think we make this green so that we're closer to Gleesa. Huh. Defector might. Go green. Pass the turd. 
Pona has Skrull. <clears throat> Could be anything. But starting to look like mono white. Yeah, yeah, baby. It is. All right. Well, this is going to be a rough one. Defector might think about swinging, but decides not to. Then he decides to swing again. Okay. We get the red. That's good. If we could just stay alive long enough to get Calamitous Cave-In off, we are going to do really well. But the thing is, this comes in tapped. Oh my word, the weight is... Oh man, wow. And not weight as in, you know, gravity as stuff. Weight as in, like a waiter. You're waiting on things. Alright, good, 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 good. That's what we like to see. Kill the Thalia? Nah, because you can protect it with a might. Get Glisa. Run it out. This at least slows him down a little bit. Got another mana in hand too. So keeping on six there, probably right. We have not gone spelunking, so Hidden Acropolis comes in tapped, unfortunately. Uh, Bruder Kathar. All right. Or you just draw everything that you need. All we have to do is stay alive. Stay alive. Ah, ah, ah. Hmm. It's another one. Another hit. And it's our turn. We could go spelunking. No, we cannot, because this enters tapped. I think we pass. Wow, come on. <laughs> come on, my guy. You can do it. Hit the next button. Maybe he doesn't see it. Uh, your go. Hello. And there we go. Perfect. We're going to end the turn. If he swings with the defector mic, we kill... The Brutal Cathar. If he swings with the Defector Might. He might want to get that extra damage off. Because this is... Yep, you got to tap it. Or if he taps... No, if he taps out, he just pays two life, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Five land available to Mr. Aggro over here. Actually, it would probably be better to kill the Thalia... Ah, it's an all... Oh, he did hold back the Defector Might. All right. Well, in that case, we could do nothing. All right, we pass. Let it go. And go to my turn. Not a mana. Oh, my word. All right, let's go spelunking. Three, four, five, six. We're not dead next turn. That's not a land. All right. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Finds a mana. We're glad you're finding mana. Comes in, does the business. Come on, give me untapped land off the top. And we find a an untapped land off the top. All right, now drop the cave in. We get our Galisa back for health, just four. And we get the Brute. Huh. And another Brutal Cathar. Which one takes that? We're about to find out. Right there. Right there. Shigeki could be good here. We need to hold up two for the Brutal Cathar. Let's drop a Shigeki. We have two sources of black. But let's tap it like this. Add that. Add that. Drop. Shigeki. And pass. Now he's probably all swinging here. We're hoping he doesn't have another Skrull. Okay. Ward 1. Fine. What else? 
We don't want to see Defector Might. If we see Defector Might, we have to go for Throat before it gets on the field. Not Defector Might. What am I talking about? Skrelv. A different Might altogether. Yeah, yeah, it is Defector Might. All right. That's good. That is good. Oh, and he's going to get some cards into his hand. He gets Hopeful Initiate and another Copper Coat Vanguard. Okay. Yep, plays the Initiate. Comes in with a Cathar. We go for the Throat, target this. Pay it. Get our Galisa. Block. Solo and Grace. Kind of need it. Kind of need it. Play it. Okay. I think that we are at least safe for now. Intrepid adversary. Now we are a lot further away from safe. Okay. Everything's big. We gotta block it all. The swing. Block here. Block here. Block here. Here we lose our Shigaki. We also lose our Soul of Wind Grace. Oh, that's a good one. That is a good one. Let's call out Blue. Terra Sunder. Maybe we are going to do the Terra Sunder. I think we will. Let's just pass. Pass back to the opponent. Goes the knight. Pretty soon we're gonna start being able to use our sunken citadels. Okay, fine. Adeline. Yes, I'm sure. Resolve, pay. Kill it. Adeline's rough. Still swinging, though. Weird. Well, I guess it does get two damage off. Ooh, we did it. We did it. We did it. We drew the thing. Swing. Huh. Yeah, remove three counters from this. Yeah, yeah, remove three counters from it. Okay, good. Now, cave it. We don't want to draw. We're already we're only at two health. But we have survived. Knight arrows. Okay. We just return that to his hand with a Sky Turtle. In fact, let's do it now. Return that to your hand. Hidden Volcano. Awesome. Now it's time for us to start to take this over just a little bit. Search for a cave. Search for a cave. Search for a cave. Maw. Ma, ma, just like that. What do you get? All right, Knight Errant Eos, perfect. Well, you don't get to look at any cards. Look at the top six cards. Well, you get to look at them. You may reveal two creature cards with 
mana value X or less from among them, where X is the number of creatures I can vote, so that's zero. So I don't know why this is taking a while, Mr. Opponent. There we go. You did it. Or do we just play the Sky Turtle? We could reach down and grab Shigeki or go for the throat. Let's play for the later game. Hmm, no. Playing for the later game is going to get us killed. That's how we get ourselves killed. All right, so return that to your hand. All right, now go to my turn. Another mana. This is two. This is two. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's good enough. Swing on in. That's my red. We want the black one. Discover. Ooh, Soul of Wind Grace. Don't mind if I do. Play it. Grab the hidden Acropolis. And pass. Awesome. That's six free damage and a Soul of Wind Grace. Again. <laughs> nice arrows. Nice Eos again. Very dedicated to getting that card out on the field, but I could imagine that he doesn't have a whole lot he could be doing. Okay, goes my turn. Perfect. Oh, baby, baby, baby. That's game. 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12. Oh, yeah, that's game, baby. That is game. If we have the mana, and I think we do, pull it up. Pull it up. Pull it up. So this is a make or break situation, and uh, it's a make situation. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Kind of tempted to keep this one because of the cave-in and opening hand. We don't really have green, which is super important for this deck. But we do have a Forgotten Monument. We could take some damage. Ooh, we got the green now. But we might want to remove something from the opponent. Considers. Okay, so we are dealing with a Mono Blue. Mono green, mono blue. Oh, hey, no, we got black. Demir control. Let's go with green. Comes in tapped. Oh, yeah, this is definitely a Demir control kind of dealio. Well, we're probably, probably struggling to get things out on the battlefield. But we'll still try for a Galisa right here. Counter. It's going to get countered. Right? You've got it. You have to have it. Yeah, you're Demir Control. You can't keep an opening hand without Irtai Scorn. That would be madness. Build out our land base a little bit. And these are now garbage. We'll get to other things. Takanuma. Actually looking pretty good to just get the Galisa Gun Slayer out of the bin. Could do it. Make him counter something else. Ooh, a Spelunking. Soul of Wind Grace. Let's get this. Try to get Confluence. Cave, cave, cave. Probably gets countered, but we gotta try. You gotta get through their counter spells. That's the thing with control builds. You've just gotta push through it. Yeah, sure, I know this is gonna get countered, but hey, we gotta get through it. There we go, Soul of Wind Grace. Air Ties Corn. All right. Just got all counters. All counters. That's the third one we've seen. Maw. K 
Can't counter that, but he could kill it. Which he probably will. Mana. My turn. Tear asunder again. Absolutely terrible. We will power up the Maw. Make him have it. Make him have it. Uh, there it is. Okay. He had it. Now we could start using the hidden Acropolises. There's an impulse. Perfect. There's tainted indulgence. Perfect. We get a Galisa. Let's do this. Spelunking. Okay. We are casting it. Do you let it go? Yes, he does. Let's me draw a card. Hmm. I'm going to pass on that. I want to make him use even more counter spells. So going down and grabbing Soul of Wind Grace again, trying to get it resolved yet again. Seems like a good idea. My word. My word. There's a terror. Okay, go to my turn. Drop the Forgotten Monument. Target Terror. Yes. And again, we know this is going to get countered. Auto pay. Fading Hope instead. Okay. Fine. Try to resolve Galisa. It gets through. Okay. Return? Tribute. Okay. 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 Kind of frustrating so far. Opponent is down to three cards, though. So, we are getting there. Cave in. We'll pay one. Does it die? Memory deluge. Out of answers there, sir. Two to hand, is it anything to save the terror? Nope. Perfect. Well, if that's the case, we're going to channel this. We're going to go get the Wind Grace again. Tainted Indulgence. All right. Now he's going to have a lot of cards. Haughty Gen. Down to four in hand. We like to see that. Sky Turtle. Try to resolve Soul of Wind Grace. Grab the Maw back. Huh. Hmm. Sneak a counter out? Okay, he's drawing. That means he doesn't quite have the answer in hand yet. Fading hope. Fine. That's good enough for me. And then we pass. There's the Jin again. All right. Cute. Cute. Another one. Perfect. 
I guess we're going to go to my turn. Another soul of the wind grace. Awesome. That means we can swing. We could come down here, grab the hidden nursery. Or do we grab Takanuma? Let's grab the hidden nursery. It's through. Try for K bin. Pay a life. Totally worth it to save 30. Hmm. Kill it. Make it dead. I want it to die. We're fighting over it. Oh, okay. Um, we will pay two. Yes. Yes. Okay, that's good stuff. Now we just got to get in with the maw. Tolarian Terror. Tolarian Terror. Maybe we won't be getting in with the maw. Hmm. Do this. We find Blood Rage Mycoid. We play Soul. We grab Hidden Nursery. Then we play Jukai Visionary. And he has a cut down. Fine. He'll lose one terror if he swings. Unless he has tribute. Now he loses nothing. Hmm. No blocks. Let's do some counting. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Don't like it. Drop the Gleesa. Pop the nursery. We find soul. We play it. We grab Takanuma, and he has decided he doesn't want to play anymore. Very, 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 very mid rangey. Very mid rangey. Would you call this a caves control deck? Probably not. We don't have a whole lot of interaction. But my god, is this mid rangey. <laughs> <laughs> just invincible creatures that you just keep grabbing onto the battlefield. We only have 27 cards left in hand, or left in the deck as well. I'm actually really surprised that uh, we ran him out of cards. He's even had like tainted indulgences and stuff. It's just the amount of things that we could do on our turn is absurd. And he cannot counter lands effects lands abilities he cannot counter those well you can with very strict circumstances but for the most part we're safe once it gets onto the battlefield let us get a win and lo and behold we're gonna go to a post-game wrap maw citadel not the best mana base but i've seen them worse i have seen them worse and we've pulled it out Let's go with green. Green seems to be a really popular color for this deck. Maw. And I guess we can get a visionary going. Try to get some lands out of the library, if you will. Don't kill him. Don't kill my poor Jakai visionary. We got a backup. All right. Well. What were you going to take? The Galisa? Probably the Galisa. He takes the Sky Turtle. Weird. Okay, we did not draw land, so... Let's activate the Visionary. Get a hidden nursery out onto the field. Two board wipes go to the bin. Bat. Alright. Bat it is. 
Galisa, and that's why. Nope, uh, he went for the go for the throat. We got another go for throat in hand. Drop the Shikai Visionary. We're going to be taking one from this bat for a while. We don't have a black mana yet. Get lost with some map tokens. That don't help us. He's actually going after this. That gives us time. That definitely gives us time. Uh, okay, play it. And we're actually going to use his map to try to find a land. We did not find a land, but we did find a spelunking. Kind of want it. Kind of want the spelunking. Not the right move, but it is the move that we are making. Another deep cavern bats. What do you take now? The other go for the throat would be pretty painful. Tear asunder. Okay. Still going after that invasion. We will go spelunking. Find a land. Find a land. Find a land. Yes, that's a land. Now, let's do it again. We get a both sage you. We will play the both sage you. We will swing. Down to 20, dude. Now he gets to flip this. And he scoops. <laughs> like, why the scoop? Maybe he got busy, maybe he had to go away, but uh, the infinite value engine had already started. We got to the five lands that we needed. The next turn we do this, grab a bunch of lands out of our library, get a bunch of three threes, come in with Galisa, go for the throat, kill one of these guys, go for the throat, grab our Terra Sunder back, and he's in a rough pickly spot. Hello, and we are back with the post-game wrap. This deck was fun to play. It's a cheap one. You could get this for less than 20 rare wild cards, so that is fantastic. Anytime we could do that, we feel like we got a little bit of a win. Snuck out a couple of combo-y things from Wizards of the Coast, but overall, I would put this around the mid-range of uh, what we're expecting out of decks in today's standard. Cosmium Confluence and the Caves, I think, do great with the Spelunking. This stuff is all very, very, very good, and the Calamitous Cave-In is very good. I don't know whether we need the Galisa in here or not, but I just really love Galisa. She does a lot for us. Colossal Sky Turtle and and um, Shigeki Jukai Visionary really love to go together. And they really love removal pieces as well. So we're going to keep stuff like that going. I do rather enjoy playing this deck. But as far as power level, as said, we're putting it right at the mid-range of what we're expecting out of decks in today's standard environment. But most of the stuff that you, you can pick out it up for dra in, in drafts, the hidden nurseries, the cavernous maws, I've got monuments, sunken citadels, and the hidden acropolises. We could pick those up pretty easily in draft chaff. Draft chaff. The only things that we really have to worry about is the confluence, which is great if you could draft that card the Soul of Wind Grace, which probably people already have in their collections, and Glisas, which probably people already have in their collection. So overall, very, very cheap deck to put together. I'm imagining people have the Glisas. I'm imagining people have Soul of Wind Grace. I'm imagining people have Shigeki Jukai Visionary. I'm imagining people probably don't have Cosmium Confluence. So a couple of rares that you have to spend there. But again, outside of this card and this card and a bunch of common lands, there's not a whole lot you really need to get this deck rolling. Yeah, we didn't in the matches have a chance to swing with Cavernous Maw as much as I think this deck requires it to be swung. But there are other combinations I want to try with Caves. And we are going to be doing that in 
later videos there is a stronger way to do this there is a better way to do this and i will find it and yeah this is a very different video than you would see on other channels that are talking about caves and that's because I like to find unique ways to play things. I think it's more fun that way, as well as if everybody's doing it, it's no longer a trick. They're not going to be surprised at your deck. They're, oh, yeah, I know this deck, and they play that line. But if you can find something that other people aren't doing that's really good, that's whenever you know you're onto something special. As far as craftability, super easy to craft, but I don't know if using resources for this one is necessarily the best thing to do thank you for joining today make sure you've liked the video subscribe to the channel and i will see you in the next video bye